Hi guys, my name's Safi Sprocket and welcome back to another episode of Safi Sprocket. So today's video is going to be a little bit slower paced than my regular stuff. However, I'm still incredibly excited to show off my new noggin protector for winter. And I also wanted to take this opportunity to show you guys what kind of things I like to do to new lid in order to get it ready for the road. Now, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or any social media, you'll know that for the last year I have been riding around in the LST Storm. I initially picked this lid because the white, the blue and the red I felt went the closest with the colour scheme of my bike. Um, I did think it was really cute just to kind of match things, you know how it is, accessories. So that's why I initially went for this this lid. However, for winter I am now shelving this bad boy and I have a new one which I'm going to show you right now. Drum roll please. So for winter I decided to switch things up and go for the LS2 Challenger in a titanium grey and fluoro yellow. Honestly I think it's adorable and also it matches my gloves. Now this isn't ordinarily a coloured scheme I would pick, however I did think it was the most appropriate to be riding around in, in winter. The actual helmet itself is extremely affordable, it was a couple of hundred and if you follow my channel you'll know that I always try to promote affordable solutions over high-end purchases. Um, the vast majority of bikers are not professional racers and we do not have endless pockets. So I always like to find a really good value for money product and I especially think that this is, you know, one of those products that falls within that category. There's a lot of additional features packed into this lid, which, you know, well, we can dive into right now. So let's get going. So starting off, once again, you may have noticed that I have gone for a full face helmet. I will never wear anything but a full face. This is because riders who do tend to wear full faces, often sustain three times less injuries to the face and the chin if they are to be involved in a collision. So for that reason, I personally will always stick with this style. You'll also notice that I haven't gone for a full face modular. I don't really see the point in buying a piece of protective clothing that's designed to protect the most important organ of your body and then adding in weak points to that. So for that reason, it's a one piece full face lid, which I will stick with. This works for me. So one of the other features which influenced my decision to get this helmet for my winter lid was the fact that it has a built in emergency release system. Um, as you can see here, it says pull, which I, I can do. This is basically a system devised for emergency services. So if in the unfortunate situation that I do get involved in an RTA, Basically, you know, the ambulance are able to remove the helmet from my head without causing any additional spinal injuries. Now, you're obviously much more likely to be involved in a crash in winter because of the icy roads and also not just yourself possibly losing control, but other people. So the idea that I have this system built into my lid, which allows emergency services to treat me faster, was quite a big consideration for me picking a helmet for the rubbish weather, basically. I think this is quite an important feature. And it's definitely going to be something I look out for in the future. And um, also, just to point out, one of the other features that I did like was the quick release. Um, again, it allows emergency services to treat me faster in the worst case scenario. And these, these are considerations that we unfortunately have to consider when riding a bike. But, you know, picking protective clothing, which takes this into consideration, is always going to be a plus. From me. So one of the other features that led me to picking this particular helmet was obviously the built-in sun visor. It's the same kind of system that I had on my LST Storm. It's just incredibly useful in the low down winter months when you know you've got that sun blurring into your eyes and you're trying to focus on the road ahead. Um, so being able to just go plop and uh, you know have some of that sun blindness eliminated is just fantastic. And then finally, the last factor that influenced this for my winter lid was obviously the helmet, fluoro yellow. Um, this is the color that all of the professionals encourage. Whether it makes a difference, I'm not entirely sure. That's quite a controversial topic, one that I shan't get into today. However, this is the color that most of the 
government organisations encourage riders to wear and also it matches my new fluoro gloves so I'm not saying it's about the accessories but it's slightly about the accessories. Now obviously as you can see right now this helmet has been set up exactly the way that I like it. This is because I've already come back from touring in Wales. The chances are you've probably seen the videos in the last few weeks. However, I do get a lot of questions about the various gadgets I choose to have on my helmet. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to take the time to basically run through all of the things that I like to do when I get a new helmet and, and how I prepare it for, you know, those longer, longer travels. I wouldn't say I'm like, you know, running around the world, but I do like to spend a lot of time on the road and visiting new places. And obviously for me, comfort is key. Um, and I also get like quite a lot of questions about, you know, the, the types of mounts I use and why I've picked those. So I thought that this would be a good opportunity to just run through some of those basically and show you guys how I prepare my helmet for motorcycle touring. So when it comes to a new lid, the first thing that I usually do is fit an intercom system. So I like to use a Senna 50S. I use this for Google Maps and I also use it for listening to music on long distance trips. Now the Senna 50S I've removed from one of my old helmets and I'm recycling it into my new lid. Now when it comes to motorcycle helmets, I try to keep a unified gadget system across every lid. This means that you don't end up with a favourite lid because of one being set up in a nicer way than another. So for example, when it comes to my Senna 50S, I use a system on the Challenger which is unified with my Storm. So basically I can just take off this unit, I still have the base on there, and then, let's say I did want to switch lids one day, I can basically just slot that onto my Storm and it takes absolutely no time. So I can use both helmets equally. Speaking of uniformity, you will notice that I have a temporary GoPro mount affixed to the front of my helmet, which is held on by an internal clip if you listen. So to remove the mount, all I need to do is hit that clip and basically pull it off and then I can transfer it to any helmet that I want. This is especially great because if so, like a friend loans you a lid or something and you still want to go out and film, you can use this on any helmet whatsoever and cause absolutely zero damage. And if you're like me where your helmets aren't always flat, so sticking a GoPro mount to them can be quite cumbersome, then you know a temporary mount that's affixed by a clip system is really good. I get a lot of questions about this. This cost me about a tenner, it was extremely cheap and I've been using it for over a year. It's very, very durable. I'll drop a link in the description if any of you are interested. It's a really fantastic solution for basically avoiding sticky mounts on your lids. So you might have noticed I have a third gadget on my lid. This is my high tail for keeping all of my hair effectively in a kangaroo pouch at the back of my lid. I often get asked a lot of questions about where my hair goes. It goes in here. Um, I've only started using this in the last month, um, but so far I've had a really good experience with it. It just sticks to your helmet using um, the 3M sticky mounts. And once again, the thing that I like about this is the fact that it is transferable between helmets. We're seeing a reoccurring trend here. And then obviously the last thing that I like to take care of when setting up a new helmet for motorcycle touring is obviously the pin lock. You'd be mad not to fit one if you do like to tour because especially when going into wet weather and your visor starts to steam up. And if you're like me and you have to wear glasses for the road, you will very much need one of these. Now, I do just want to say some words of caution. If you are looking at this video, the chances are you're looking into setting up your motorcycle helmet for bike touring. And if this is the case, I do just want to say to get this kind of setup, you don't need to spend more than you can afford. For example, I know that you can pick up cheap action cameras in the supermarket for 25 pounds these days. My mount cost me a tenner. If you can't afford a main brand sat nav system, you know, have a look at cheaper alternatives or even just secondhand ones on the marketplace. As long as it connects to Bluetooth with your phone, you're, you know, you're good to go. Um, the only thing I would really recommend spending money on is making sure you get your pin lock new, just because, you know, that is an important safety feature. And obviously spending money on the safest helmet you can afford. But in terms of all of the other gadgets and things like this, you know, 
there are some areas that you can skimp on. And when it comes to motorbike gadgets, it's often the case that, you know, we don't go out and spend hundreds every year on new gadgets and new tech, but it does tend to be something that we slowly upgrade. So if you want to, you know, initially get into motorbike touring, consider buying things within your budget. And then as you tour more and, you know, you progressively go further, then consider putting the money into those gadgets and basically just work on an upgrade system. You know, if you've been touring like two years by now and you're like, ah, you know, put in a lot of miles, I'm going to get a lot of use out of a main brand headset system, then, you know, invest the money at that point. But until you get to that point, don't feel the pressure, especially from YouTubers and influencers to go out and spend more than you can afford because that's not going to make you have a nice time. That's just going to make you very stressed. And at the end of the day, if you want to tour, it's better for you to put the money in the tank than it is so you can listen to Britney Spears. So. <laughs> and there we have it. That's how I set up my motorcycle helmet for touring. Now, I know that this hasn't been as crazy and fast paced as some of my other travel vlogs, but I do think that this is a really interesting topic, especially if you're new to bikes and new to bike touring and you're looking for some ideas to well, basically get things a little bit easier on the road. So I hope you guys have gotten a little bit of use out of this video at the very least. Now, if you do want to see more great bike content, don't forget to hit subscribe. I release a new video every Sunday, 6 p.m. And if you press the bell notification, you will get an alert for when it's going live. In the meantime, ride safe, stay crazy, and I'll see you next week. My name's Safi Sprocket, signing off. <laughs>